I didn't think the Leafs played that bad. Oh, you can plug your ears all you want, but sometimes you just lose games. What the hell is that? What do you know? What the fuck? We have dogs in here. Hi. Leafs Nation. Dan Witness. Frost and Lucas. Oh, Austin Matthews is the lead. Why do I watch hockey? Stressfully. Mostly. Are you in? Leafs lose 4-2 to, to the Columbus. We didn't even die. Leafs lose 4-2 to the Columbus Blue Jackets. I hate their stupid cannon. This was a real barn burner between two good teams who were completely decimated. Both teams missing their fantastic starting goaltenders. Columbus wasn't using Sergei Bobrovsky. The Leafs weren't using Freddie. And both teams were without arguably their most dynamic and most exciting young players. The Leafs without Austin Matthews. The Blue Jackets without Zach Wierenski. Blue Jackets are mad they've lost a few games. Leafs are on the second half of a back-to-back. -back. So right away you know this game is a mystery box. And usually mystery box games go to the team that works the hardest, which in this one was Columbus. Easily. No, I'm not going to completely lean into the Leafs. I didn't think they actually had that bad of a game despite the 4-2 loss, but let's be honest, they got at work. You know me and Mike Babcock, we've been at odds a little bit lately, but I gotta say, after the game, I, I was loving everything he was saying. He has a way of sounding condescending sometimes when he's trying to make his point, but he said over and over and over and over again, simply because he found it to be the truth that the Leafs were outworked. And it was funny listening to the Leafs talk about it after the game because they knew what to expect. It's a John Tortorella team that's angry. They tend to be miserable to deal with, and in this one they were. And when it comes to working hard, it can't just be, you gotta have an active body, you gotta have an active mind too. Jake. Columbus gets the puck in the Leafs corner and the Leafs are there with numbers. Then somehow Connor Carrick is getting double teamed. Sedlak is very clearly behind Gardner and he even sees him. L2R2 Jake, L2R2 at least L2, Ah, oh, come on! Sedlak gets the puck way the too easy and he beat, yeah, okay, alright, alright, okay, how many more times we're gonna do this three, okay, can't wait! Oh my god, imagine having to play Columbus in the playoffs. And it's such a shame because in the opening minutes of the game, I thought the Leafs looked like the better team. But it's okay, it's it's okay, the Leafs have a power play to end the period. And even though the Leafs haven't solved Corpus yet, you see they're coming close. Marner's had some chances. Willie's taking his chances with his patient shot. Oh, but he got it flicked away by Seth Jones. Someone catch it right now! Seth Jones is allowed to walk in uncontested on Curtis McAuley. There it is. You were a little late on that one. You were a little late, weren't you? Blue Jackets head to intermission up 1-0. Second period. My goodness, Mitch Marner has been getting a lot of praise this morning after that highlight real goal he scored that ultimately meant nothing. And oh, we'll get to that. But Neil was dancing in this one. And on this play, he's dancing in the Blue Jacket zone, looking to make up for it. He goes for a pass. Why would you do that? Oh, that's why. Take off those goat horns, Jake, and fire that into the net. But Leafs cut the Leafs. Leaf. What? That's, 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 that's our horn? That's our horn. That's our horn. Why is there again? And Jake, yeah, with a big selly for that one, because you know he wanted it bad. Although after the game, it wasn't enough to keep Mike Babcock from saying, yeah, I mean, not good enough when talking about Jake Gardner. Then midway through the frame, the Leafs are on the penalty kill, which is usually not not a huge deal for them. But in this one it was, and McElhaney might be out with injury for the next 18 months. I only have so many limbs, guys! Despite making at least two 10-bell saves on this penalty kill, and making a save that looked an awful lot like the one he made on Crosby last season, Pierre-Luc Dubois is able to put the puck in, and now the Blue Jackets have a two-goal lead again at 3-1, and yeah, yeah, I'm, I was just gonna try to talk to him this time, and it didn't work, did it? I feel like I pulled something doing the McElhaney impression. How does he do that for real? I heard a few people talking about, well, you know, they don't have a sight to have in the line, so that's why their penalty kill wasn't very good. It just seemed like a very simple breakdown of communication between Roman Polak and Zach Hyman. That was weird. Polak seems to have the front of the net. Hyman's in front of him. He tells him to switch. They do, and then either Hyman abandons his post or Polak's out of position. I have no idea, but Dubois was left wide open. Okay, we're in the third period. Corpus Allo has been playing very well, but he's not immortal. Leafs have been looking good. They've been getting their chances. Hopefully they didn't use up all their goals against the Hurricanes. Connor Carrick trying to keep the puck in at the blue line, and oh my god, his stick! Blue Jackets essentially have a two-on-one. Borgman's the only guy back, and they snipe on Curtis McElhaney. Okay, is this the last one? Hopefully it's the last one. It better be the last one! This goal was another, like, you just gotta be quick thinking on the play. Because, yeah, Carrick's stick breaks, but he skates right by the Leafs bench. There was barely any time to make this decision, but either Carrick or someone, there's a bunch of people on the bench that's gotta be like, stick, stick, stick. No matter who it is on the bench, give him a left-handed stick. It would have been better than nothing. Just as a little aside, it might cheer you up a little bit. Go watch that highlight highlight on NHL.com. I don't know who the broadcast crew is for the Blue Jackets games, but they're just having a casual chat about Lou Lamorello for some reason as the goal goes in. Like, you can almost hear in their voices how they're just looking at each other as they're talking, and they were surprised to see that a goal had been scored. Like, it took a goal horn and cannon to get their attention. So now, 
I'll leave seven mission. One, avoid allowing an empty netter so I can keep my hearing. Two, score three goals. Mitch Marner goes, okay, I'll try. Mitch, yes, Dad. For the last time, it's Patrick. Sorry, Dad. I know I said it's a school night, but we need you, so here. <gasps> Mountain Dew! <laughs> the net is that way, Mitch! <laughs> oh, yeah! Yes! Way to go, Mitchie! You think you can make Spadina Bus play two more times? Oh my god, you're so old! Oh, oh, my helmet flew off, and that's why you do up the straps, kids. Fortunately, nothing got broken on the wall. Unfortunately, Marner got stopped on his second incredible attempt on Corpus Allo, and the Leafs weren't able to score again. They lose 4-2. Columbus Blue Jackets fans, if I were you, I would tell me what it's like to have John Tortorella as a coach, because this is exactly the kind of game I expected out of a John Tortorella team, and it was a great response to what have been some pretty poor performances lately. Also, if I were you, I would ignore what a lot of people are saying about Tortorella and accountability and stuff because he had a very short I think it was a 14 second press conference and then after that he had an 11 second press conference and people were going oh how is that gonna show accountability look a lot of people in life will tell you to play to your strengths but it's also good to be acutely aware of your weaknesses Tortorella's weakness is that he is a maniac and his mouth gets him in trouble all the time he has top 10 lists that are just about him they had to cut highlights out of it he tried to fight a coach once well, he should just stand up there and be an adult and not do that. Tortorella has been around for a very long time. He won the cup with Tampa 13 years ago. If he could control his temper on the podium, he would have done that by now. So yes, I understand why reporters are mad, but you gotta remember, he's not trying to be your headline. What he's done is he's come out, he's provided a quote, yeah, and you can use that. You can't teach an old dog new tricks, and similarly, you can't teach an old coach who always goes flip mode not to go flip mode. So I'd be proud of him. At least that's what I would do if I were you. So, uh, the Leafs played poorly. Uh, McElhaney wasn't fantastic. Uh, none of the Leafs were really fantastic, save for Nylander, Marner, a couple forwards. Even Nylander, it was just flashes. The JVR Bozak Marner line has been fantastic over the last few games, and they were a huge key to the Leafs' success last year. The Kadri line had their purpose. The Mac Matthews line was tearing it up offensively, but a lot of teams, especially good teams, have two good lines. Not every team has three, and there were a bunch of games last season where maybe the Matthews line didn't have it, the Kadri line had its hands full, the JVR Bozak Marner line had to pick up the slack. We haven't gotten a ton of those games this year, but when we have, the Leafs have killed people. This should be extra incentive for the Leafs to pick up their socks because this line is going. Marner finally is going! So let's get going. Similarly, question of the game, Austin Matthews. The Leafs have one game before Christmas. It's a two-day break, and then they play the Rangers on Saturday. Even if he is cleared to play, do you bring Matthews back for that game? Because correct me if I'm wrong, he skated four straight days. It could potentially be six, and then on Rangers game day, that would be the seventh straight day he was on skates. Why not, just to be safe, because it's Austin Matthews, and you're nice and comfy in the standings, Give him the game off against the Rangers. Followed by four days off, he gets to just have a nice time and enjoy the holidays. And he makes his triumphant return in Arizona against the Coyotes. It's a little too perfect, isn't it? Look, I want Matthews back more than anyone, but you gotta be smart about it, especially if it's a you-know-what that people have been saying. Speaking of you-know-what, maybe Kapanen shouldn't play next game. On account of the you-know-what spotter, didn't seem to think anything was wrong. Why am I talking about concussions like they're Voldemort? And lastly, 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 I want to address something Elliot Friedman said, uh, because it kind of broke my heart. He was talking on the Sportsnet broadcast about how he thinks there's a section of Leaf fans that, because of the success of Calvin Pickard and Garrett Sparks, they almost want to see Curtis McElhaney fail. And I guess it bugged me because I was like, ah, oh, have I been part of that? Look, heading into the season, I stand by the fact that it was right to be worried about Curtis McElhaney. It's in the numbers, guys. But in a very awkward role, always playing on the second half of a back-to-back, -back, he's really saved the Leafs bacon a couple times. Not that this was a banner game for him either, but he did give them a chance to win with a few huge saves. The Leafs just kind of didn't win it for him. Look, put it this way, McElhaney is the Leafs' backup goalie for the foreseeable future. This can't be a game-by-game -game thing and every stinker we're yelling and screaming for Sparks and Pickard. Leave McElhaney alone because he's earned it. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you liked this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends. Brand new Panicle Pizza Steve Dangle podcast will be recorded today. It's really hard to say all that in one breath, you know? I liked it better when they scored eight goals.